Hi everyone, it's Belinda from Mum Central and today with me I've got a good friend of mine, Denise Duffield-Thomas. Hi Denise. Oh my god, I'm so looking forward to this interview. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Um, now, if you haven't heard of Denise, Denise is a bit of a money guru. Um, she um, is a money mentor. She's an award-winning speaker and author. And she had a program called the Lucky Bitch Money Bootcamp, which I, along with thousands of other women, have done. And it's really helped to change my mindset around money and the way that I look at money and welcome money into my life. And it's really been a real game changer for me. Uh, she has a new program which is coming out and um, one of the things she's talking about is money archetypes. Admittedly, I didn't know much about money archetypes until very recently, so I've invited her along today to talk a little bit more about it and really get down to our money DNA and how we can change our lives and our financial blueprint. So, Denise, over to you. Well, you know what? The first thing I want to say is why I'm so passionate about money. This is not just to buy stuff and it's not about money for money's sake because that stuff is nice and we all want to take more holidays and we want to be able to have more comfort for our family. Some women want to have a bigger house, a bigger car, and that's okay as well. But the reason why I'm so passionate, you know, I grew up with a single mom who really freaking struggled with money my whole life. And I saw her make decisions that were not in alignment to her highest good because of money. And I saw her stay in relationships because of money. Um, I saw her get into relationships because of money. I saw her have to do work that she didn't want to do um, because of money. And so I had such a burning passion for, for such a young age about women having financial independence. And that is my driver. And I think it's so important that women now, we have to step up. We can't pretend that money doesn't exist, although some of us would like to, and some of the archetypes we'll talk about as well, would like to think that money does not exist or that money shouldn't be important in, in our world. But the truth of it is, it is really important in our world and it runs a lot of stuff. And unfortunately, most of that stuff is run and controlled by men. And we bring a different energy to money. And that is why it's kind of our calling, whether you've got a business or you're in a career or not, that doesn't matter. I mean, think of the economic power that stay-at-home mums still hold, even if they don't necessarily earn the money. We have to step up. We have to be friends with money. We have to be okay earning it. We have to be okay spending it in ways that are important to us as women. And, you know, it's been proven. women When women have more money, societies grow and prosper because of the way we spend money and the way we value money in changing the lives of our children and our communities. So I just wanted to start off with that little rant, Belinda, because I want people to know this is not just about having money for money's sake. This is about the planet really kind of needs the mother's touch <laughs> around money. And up till now, we've either been disenfranchised with it, reluctant or scared of it. And we can't do that anymore. The planet needs us and our sisters in other countries need us to step up as well because what we do impacts them too. Absolutely. I think a lot of the time with, with money, there's a lot of conditioning that comes to us from our parents and it might be about hang on to it, don't spend it. We, you know, I've worked hard for this and that flows on through generation to generation unless we're able to really um, step up and think about how we might like to change our mindset around money for our, our generation and obviously our children and generation and so forth. So Yes. And this is why it's so important for us to do the work, right? Because people ask me all the time because I have money books and I teach about money. They ask me what they should do with their kids and what they should teach their kids. Or they ask me what I'm teaching my kids. The truth is, it doesn't matter what we say. You can sit down and you can teach the kid, your kids something about money, but they are watching you. They're watching how you talk about money, how you relate to money in your life how you allow yourself to receive it, to spend it, what you spend your money on. They are watching that and that is going to make a bigger impact on them than anything else, which is why I always say to women, it starts with you. You have to do, do your own stuff around money and you have to be a role model if you want your kids to have a healthy relationship with money. Yeah, that's awesome. Love it. Yeah. So let's talk about the sacred money archetypes because this has been really fun to do this. And I can know someone quite intimately as a friend or someone in business, but I can't necessarily guess 
their archetype. This is how you relate to money at a really deep level. And um, there are eight different archetypes and I can briefly talk about what they are, but I really want to talk about yours as well um, because you have got the perfect archetype for the work that you're doing, by the way. Oh, good, good. Um, yes, which is great because some people say, oh, well, some people are just good with money and some people aren't. And you might even wonder sometimes about how in families you grew up with the exact same parents, the exact same kind of money stories, but yet people can be so different. And I don't know if you have siblings, Belinda, but you know, my, me and my brother, we grew up the exact same way and we have completely different money personalities. I'm sure you do in your family as well. Yes, absolutely. Yep. My sister's very different with the way she handles money to the way, or even the way she looks at money. So yeah, absolutely agree with that. Yeah, so this is where our unique money personalities come into play. And um, so as I said, there are eight. So there's the accumulator. So this is the archetype that's really good with money and savings and investments. These can sometimes also be the real like tight wads. <laughs> the people who are like really cheap around money, really frugal. On the plus side, um, these are people who can just be really good at money. And often you'll find there's a lot of bookkeepers and accountants who are the accumulators which is kind of interesting. Then we've got the celebrity archetype. This is the, um, the people who love spending money. They love bling. And we've all got that girlfriend who doesn't matter if she's down to her last like $10, she'll buy a, a bunch of flowers or she'll spend all her money on shoes. She always has the latest stuff, even if she necessarily can't afford it. And that's the funny thing about the celebrity too. They can sometimes show off an aura of being quite wealthy, but sometimes if they're not, uh, haven't embraced some of their other gifts behind the scenes, they can often be kind of broke behind the scenes. Um, and there's healthy ways for each of these archetypes, by the way, to relate to money. Um, then we've got the maverick, which I know you've got a little bit of, which I'll talk about in a second. These are the, like, think of the Richard Branson, like the kind of rebellious, sometimes a bit rebellious nature. Um, they love to do things outside of the box. They don't like to do things because someone's told them to. They don't like, um, the, they don't like rules. Um, I have Maverick in my um, personality and I call my business lucky bitch. So you'll find that some Mavericks have got a bit of an out there business personality or they've chosen an interesting name for their business. Mavericks can be great at making money, but they can also be risk takers. It means they can be a bit feast or famine around, around money. So they can often put themselves in situations where they feel okay spending all of their money at the end of the month. They're, they're totally comfortable with that. Whereas the accumulator loves to have lots of savings. So they freak out about that. And you can start to see how with this work, if you've got a different money personality than your partner, you can see how you can start to trigger each other. Yeah. Imagine a celebrity married to it an accumulator. Yeah. Danger. <laughs> yeah. They annoy each other. They're like, why are you spending that? Why are you being such a, you know, why are you being so tight? Um, then we've got the alchemist. So these are the people who, you might have girlfriends like this. Everything they touch turns to gold. They're, they're, everything just seems to work out for them, whether it's in business or they might just get money out of the blue. Uh, and they always just seem to pull things off. Um, accumulators can be great at making money, but they can also be great at, at releasing money. <laughs> so they can be in a constant feast or famine, um, which can you know, cause problems, but also um, they're very optimistic. So they're like, I'll just manifest it. It's fine. The money will show up. Don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. <laughs> so that can be really fun. Um, then we've got the nurturers. So the nurturers are the ones who are always giving. They give, 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 give. Nothing is ever too much. Um, and nurturers have a massive big heart. They just want everyone to be okay. They want everyone to be um, taken care of, which is wonderful. The downside for that is that often nurturers can get to a place where um, they don't, they just don't receive. So this is where you get the burnt out mum, you get the resentful mum, you get the martyred mum sometimes, or you just get someone who's just sick and tired of coming, coming last. They can often feel very invisible. Um, if um, a nurturer has a business, sometimes they don't make money because they just give everything away for free and they feel they they feel a little bit um, kind of mean setting boundaries or mean even asking asking for money so that that can obviously if you think about it that can be that can be a bit of a problem 
Then we've got the connectors. So the connectors are the ones who love relationships. They, they love, um, Maybe if it's in business, they love creating conferences or masterminds or Facebook groups because they love bringing people together. Um, or they're the people who love organizing parties and they just, they love those relationships with people. Um, then you've got, who have we missed out on? The romantics. So the romantic are the people, that, this is their inner hedonist. These are people who love um, luxury. They love first class living. They'll travel, they'll travel first class. They say things like, I deserve it. I'm worth it. Even if they don't necessarily have the money to back them up, they're like, well, I deserve to buy that thing because I've been working so hard. <laughs> um, and they can often get themselves a little bit in trouble because they don't like, sometimes they don't like thinking about money. So they like kind of ignoring the money. Now, as I've been saying this, people might be thinking, well, how do I find out about my money personality? So before we go any further, Belinda, and we talk a little bit about you and how your, your top ones have come together, can you just tell everyone how they can take the quiz? Because I know you have a special link. Yes, we do. So we've got an article up on Mum Central. So it's mumcentral.com.au forward slash money quiz. And um, yeah, there'll be a little bit more info about Denise and um, links to take the quiz. So I, I, um, yeah, I had a ball taking the quiz and I'm actually, yeah, I can definitely see how it's all played out and how that reflects into my life and my business really. So, yeah. Well, they do. So you're the nurturer and the maverick and then you also, you were tired for a lot of other places. And as I said to you before we hit record, that that's quite sometimes if someone, um, has a lot that are the same, it means that sometimes they can be a bit of a chameleon. And I don't know if that's you. It means that sometimes you can be, you can be anyone that people want you to be. You can shift and change and you can get along with a lot of different people. You can also see a lot of different points of view. So I don't know if that is something that people tell you that, you know, you can kind of get along with anyone and you can kind of fit in anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I'd say yes to that. But yep. I did think my main ones, Nurturer and Maverick, <laughs> to a T. Yeah, I've got that entrepreneurial spark. I love to break the rules and um, within reason. But yeah, I, just because it is, and that's how I, you know, I built my whole business was because it wasn't out there all I'll, I'll make my own. Um, but um, definitely the whole nurturer thing, which is obviously, you know, everything we do at Mum Central is all about our readers and, you know, it's all about a lot of nurturing. So um, it's not surprising to me that flows on into my money mindset and habits as well. It's not surprising at all. And I just realized I missed out on the eighth archetype and which is surprising because this is actually my top archetype. This is the ruler. So the ruler is often a workaholic. They are always coming up with ideas. Um, if they're in business, they're working all the time. They're probably starting new businesses, but then rulers can often be, if a ruler is a stay at home mum, they might be the one who is president of the PTA or getting involved in um, their kids' activities and like really getting involved in everything because they can't switch off. So they have a million and one activities. Um, but so yeah, rule is my top one. Then I have maverick, then I have romantic. So I kind of, you know, I, I get that maverick, that maverick part of you. And I'm dying to hear in a second how that plays out. But I want to just talk about the nurturer. The fact that you have created a business around mothers is perfect <laughs> it's perfect right because as you said you're all about the love and the heart and the nurturing of, of being a mum. where you've been able to create a really cool business out of it is probably that maverick side as well because some mums some nurturers sorry they just give and they just can't receive in return and that can that can really um Im impact the amount of people that they can help and what you've managed to do is you've obviously realized if I create this business, I can help even more people. Absolutely. And, you, and you've got such a massive following where some nurturers get stuck. And I want people to hear this who are nurturers or suspect they might be a nurturer. You've got to take the quiz to find out is that they want to give so much and they want to help people so much. But because they're burnt out, they can only really help a very small amount of people. And I, and I want to hear from you on this, Belinda. Did you get to a stage in your business where you did feel like you could only serve a small amount of people and not go big? Or have you always wanted to go big? No. Well, actually, when I started my business, I started a baby classifieds. Um, I got fed up with paying eBay 
um, to list my son's gear for sale. So I decided to create my own because there was no, no other decent option out there. It was free. I didn't want to make it that parents had to pay. So it was free for mums to list their gear for sale. And yes, I did get to that particular point um, because I built this free platform and it suddenly it was a hobby and then it turned into this business. Um, and I, <laughs> the nurturer in me said, I don't want my mums to pay to use this service. So how can I flip it on its head and make it that it's still going to cover the cost of building a business? And that's where, um, I guess, Mum Central came into play, that we can have a bigger audience, broader content, um, and we can, pr you know, we can publish content from brands and get brands in front of our mums and they're the ones that are going to benefit from getting in front of our mums so they're the ones that can pay for the privilege and still despite a lot of people telling me I need to charge my readers and my mums to have access to all of this I've always fought that because I want this to be um, available for anyone to have access to and yeah again it's the brands that are going to benefit so they can pay for the privilege so yeah absolutely yeah. So you've been able to create that win-win synergy and I think that's really smart, right? And that's part of your maverick coming in as well of I want to solve this problem. People are telling me to solve it this way, but I'm going to come up with an alternative solution and you've been able to brainstorm that and come up with something where you still feel an integrity around helping people and leading with your heart and but still being able to receive in return and to to make money out of it because some nurturers get stuck in the hobby mentality and and it costs them money to have that little hobby it costs them money to be in business because they lead with their heart and but they think that that's you can't have a win-win and this is the lesson i want people to hear as well every archetype has its path to wealth if that's what you want Wealth is different for everyone, of course. Um, but you've got to make sure that you're leading with your strengths while finding ways to overcome some of those challenges. It does not mean, and this is the nurturer, sometimes they start to freak out because they go, I don't want to choose between love or money, Denise. Love is always going to win out. The connectors say, I don't want to choose between relationships and money because relationships will always win out. And where you've got to get to is realizing you don't have to choose. You just have to find the path where you can still honor that massive, big, generous heart of, your, of yourself. But it's also you've learned to receive and you've learned to be able to, to create both. And then the alchemy of that means that you've been able to serve so many more women than if you were like being burnt out and resentful going, I'm paying for all these website costs and no one's appreciating me, but I can't ask for any money. I mean, think of how you would have been able to maybe serve a couple of hundred women instead of close to a million women. And that's the beauty of working with your strengths and not against them. Absolutely. I love it. Yep. That's, oh God, that's like you're singing my song to me right now. It rings true so much. And I think you really explained those different um, archetypes so well. And then you can, you can just start thinking about people and, and, thinking about their relationships with money and exactly who they are and how that plays out. So yes, I encourage you all to take the quiz and see what your top archetypes are and um, yeah, then um, really see how that plays out in your, in your life as well. Well, yeah, if you think, if you know how your husband is with money, how your parents are, how your kids, if your kids are old enough to take the quiz, but um, you know, your, your girlfriends, your business partners, the people that you work with, um, your, your colleagues, once you know them quite intimately, you don't have to even get them to, to do the quiz necessarily. You can kind of guess and you can find ways to not trigger each other. Now, Mark and I, so I am a rule at Maverick Romantic. So I'm a workaholic that likes to think out the box, but I also like luxury and ease. So the way that I kind of temper my workaholism sometimes is I find systems or I outsource, I get people to help me in my business so I'm not doing it all myself. So I'm trying to, um, yeah, work, but work in a smart way that doesn't burn me out. My husband is, he's a ruler, maverick, celebrity. So he's a workaholic. <laughs> um, he likes to think of different ways of doing things. And his celebrity means he loves to treat himself he, and he loves buying gadgets. So whenever we do a launch or we have a big success, um, he'll buy himself a gadget. Like even if he like, wins at football, he'll buy himself 
like a treat and he loves shoes and he loves, he, he does love his clothes like a lot of celebrities do. Um, but then I realized too, in my, in my life and business, I needed some nurturers to come in, you know, so we have a beautiful, um, nanny who comes and helps and she's a nurturer because I don't have that energy. So it helps you to see sometimes where your gaps are as well as where your strengths might lie. So it's, it's fascinating work. And when people go do the quiz and I'll get you to tell the, tell them the link again in a second, what you get from that is, is module one of my actual paid sacred money archetypes course. And module one is the overview of your archetype. It talks a little, touches a little bit on your strengths, your gifts, your challenges, but really what makes you tick and your true money personality is really made up of your, of your top three. And that's why it's, it's really helpful to know. Um, you will get an email straight after you do the quiz and it tells you um, in order where you play at. And then you can listen to this again and, and kind of go, oh yeah, cool. I can see how that flavor, um, and you could have the same top two as someone, but that third one could just make your, make your money flavor very, very different. Hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, that's fabulous. Well, I think that um, certainly sets the scene for archetypes and my archetypes and obviously how, obviously the quiz. So again, the web address is www.mumcentral.com.au forward slash money quiz. So I urge you to take the quiz, find out for yourself, take, if you can even get your hubby to take the quiz and have, have a think about how that's playing out in your lives and obviously, um, yeah, learn more from Denise. And um, yeah, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your time today. No, thank you. And I want to ask one favour as well, Belinda. So um, in your groups, what I would love you to do, if you can, do a little poll. Um, and this is what I did in, my, in one of my groups. I did a poll and got people to do it. And it's so interesting to see how communities shake out because often there is very dominant archetypes within communities. I thought mine would be ruler. I thought there would be a lot of rulers in my communities and a lot of alchemists and mavericks, but nurturer was actually our top archetype in our group by a long way. So I would love you to, to tell me, like once you've you know, shared this in your community, I want to hear where the mum central community plays out. I guess it will probably be nurturer as well, but I, it could be, could be surprised. It could be surprising. And you know what? Celebrity was our, was our least popular archetype. In, in our group. So I found that really fascinating and uh, that would be such a pleasure for me if you could let me know where people shake out in Mum Central. Absolutely. Look forward to it. I'll be sure to do that and we'll let you know. Sounds fabulous. Thanks, Denise. Thanks, everyone. Bye. See you later. Bye.